the uh, uh, two of the main portions of the of the assignment, right? The website edit and the website list. And feel free to reuse this uh, for your own purposes to complete the assignment uh, and or uh, for your own project, right? Um, uh, so so the, the the next part of this is to create the page list. Now the page list, the page edit, uh, and the page new, right, are going to be very very similar to the website list, website edit, and the website new. All right. Uh, so so I would hope that uh, uh, you would you would reuse uh, the those three when you're done with the website, right? It should uh, it should be very trivial, very easy to. Uh, just copy the folder, right, and recreate those three for the pages. Yes, right. So that should be uh, okay. Uh, so let's let's just 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 get started with a uh, page list. Um, if I go to page list, um, as I said earlier, um, I could grab website list, right, and just rename it to page list, and that could be like the beginning of my page list uh, development. Yes, I'm not gonna go into it. Um, the, the, the website edit could be also a starting point for my page edit, all right? Uh, but notice that this quickly is going to get um, overwhelming, the number of pages that you're handling, okay? Uh, and we have to come up with a, uh, a, an organization, uh, way, way to organize our files, right, to deal with complexity, right? Uh, not only are we going to have these HTML files, uh, soon we'll have accompanying JavaScript files for every single one of these pages, right? And, and uh, each one of these will have perhaps also services that connect to the database to go fetch uh, data back and forth. So this is going to get uh, fairly complex pretty soon, right? So we can start organizing um, around this uh, by creating dedicated folders uh, to uh, organize this, right? Now, it, there's several ways to organize this. Uh, one way is by feature. And you create a folder for each type of feature that can be reused across the um, across different um, uh, portions. Am I recording? Yes. Um, another way to to organize it is by um, by the type of um, of entity, right? In this case, we we have at least three entities, right? Uh, for instance, we have the user entity, right? That and and we have pages for those for the for the user entity, the login page the uh, register page and the profile page all deal with a user, right, with, uh, with user entities, yes? Um, whereas website, edit, website list, and website new, they all deal with websites, right? And same thing with pages, deal with pages, yes? Uh, so I'm going to organize around those types of entities. So I'll, I'll create a, a directory for user. I'll create another directory for uh, pages. Page. I don't like plural. Remind me that I don't like plural. Uh, page and uh, the other one is uh, website. Uh, website. Okay. All right. And so I'm going to grab each one of these. Um, all the website. Right. I'm going to drag them into the website. Uh, now, if I move them, uh, typically it would break hyperlinks that refer to these to these uh, to these files. But most IDEs today are, are smart enough to uh, uh, you know, identify these problems and fix them for you, right? Uh, so this one is, for instance, um, search for references. What it's going to do is that it's going to look at these HTML files and see who, who else is referring to these HTML files, right? It's going to look for hrefs that refer to these, and it's going to update them, right? It's going to, it should ask me, maybe, no? I guess it didn't ask me. Uh, let's see if I if I broke anything. Uh, the way I, I, I come here is from where? Uh, from the login page, right? The login page. Uh, notice that the login page was fixed. See that my login button used to refer to website list. Now it refers to website website list. See that? It's smart enough to do that. Uh, no, I, no, most modern IDEs will allow you to do this. Okay. Uh, so same thing with pages. Let's move pages into pages, into page. Say OK. Uh, and I'll move the, these user ones into user. Make sense? All right. Uh, uh, next week, when we start adding controllers and services and all, you know, lots of JavaScript, 
we'll have to revisit this, right, and create yet another layer of, 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 of organization to, have, to be able to distinguish between HTML and the accompanying uh, JavaScript, right? But we'll do that next week. So for now, this is good. All right, any questions? All right, so I'm going to leave that there. Uh, let's, let's move on to, um, to, uh, to yet another uh, side part of the, of the assignment. All right, let's see. So page list is there, is it? Oh no, wait, did it move? I think it moved, right? Graduate, let's see, uh, index, uh, login, I logged in. I'm in the, in the list, of, in the list of, uh, of websites. I can edit a website, I can say delete it. I can say, I can, okay, notice that it's navigating to page list, but page list is exactly like website list, okay? Which is okay, it's a good starting point. Right? The, when the page was created, when the page was last accessed, and things like that, right? All right, good. Uh, so from the page list, though, um, obviously if I click on the cog, that would go, take me to uh, the edit the page, right? Edit the page. But if I click on the page, it's supposed to take me where? To the uh, list of the widgets for this page, right? So let's do that. Let's go to uh, page, page list page list and, um, and so on the list of pages pages right here right instead of going to page list uh, sh it should go to a um, widget list yes and widget list should live where under a directory widget list widget right and widget list should live here and I'm gonna copy one of these folks uh, I don't really care which one since um, uh, I'll, I'll copy this one, uh, but uh, we're gonna re we're gonna re replace most of the content, right? We're only gonna keep the header and the footer, right? And everything else we're going to throw away. Uh, so this is going to be widget list. So there's the widget list. Um, and so the page page list. If I click on any one of the page, it should navigate to. Uh, let's see. Let's go, gonna go up, down to the widget. And then down to widget list. Yes, right. Um, just to make sure that I, I am in the right place, I'm going to name this widget list. Let's see if I click on this. Indeed, it navigates to widget list. Everybody okay? All right. All right. So we're not we're not going to really need any of this. Let's uh, let's see what uh, what the assignment says. The assignment says that the widget list should look something like this, right? Uh, a list of widgets, uh, some of them uh, headers, some of them images, some of them uh, YouTube videos, some of them just plain old HTML, right? Uh, so let's uh, let's um, uh, let's 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 see how we can reproduce uh, this over here. Okay? All right. So uh, in the widget list, we are in the widget list. Uh, we're not going. We're we're only going to keep the header. And the footer, everything in between, we're going to throw away. Okay, so let's throw this away. Uh, maybe we'll just keep container fluid. That's it, right? Just container fluid. Okay, it's gone. Right. So, so um, uh, widget list is empty. Right. Uh, so let's let's uh, let's try to recreate what we have for the assignment. A, um, an h1 maybe this is a I believe this is an h2 or h3 uh, and this is an image so let's let's uh, and that will give us a chance to introduce those uh, those elements too right so since since these are since these are widgets right widget objects or widget components right, it would be a good idea right to uh, encapsulate them in a div right perhaps even with a class of widget right which we could then, um, associate different uh, style transformations, right, for widgets in general, right? Uh, so we have here one, two, three, four widgets, the whole bunch of widgets. So presumably we might have lots of these here, uh, classes maybe with the class widget. This is a widget, right? Uh, and we might have several of these, several of these widgets. Now, uh, if you're going to create your own classes, up to this point, we haven't created any of our classes. Well, we did, right? When we used, uh, uh, we declared yellow, blue, red, right? Those are classes that we create ourselves. And uh, we want to make sure that um, if we create anything, 
we, we, uh, we name it in such a way that it is uh, unmistakable uh, that it's ours, right? That this class belongs to us, right? Uh, so, so one way to do it is to um, uh, prepend, right, in front of anything that you create uh, with a an agreed upon uh, namespace, right? Um, for instance, in Angular, uh, the typical namespace is ng, right? Uh, here for the for the web dev course, maybe wd, right? Could be could be a, an appropriate uh, naming convention. So let's let's say that we are always going to create these these uh, widgets with these uh, these classes ourselves. Right now they don't have any any, any styling, right, uh, associated to them, but it allows us to uh, give us give a um, um, categorize right uh, either behavior or look and feel for this type of component that we're trying to build. All right. All right. So. Now we can put in, start putting in here perhaps content that is specific to this particular widget, right? In the if we, in, in this one here would be maybe an H1, right? So maybe this would be an H1, and it's a Gizmodo, right? So let's see if we can render that. We'll see what that looks like. So there's Gizmodo, right? That's good. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, so then we have maybe a smaller uh, H uh, header. Right, so maybe this is um, so this is an H, maybe an H three, right? And uh, so since I don't have actual content, let me actually go to Gizmodo, and let me copy some content from there. Uh, so let's uh, grab some 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 actual content. Let's grab this. Uh, let's see the content. There it is. Sleep cool and comfortable all summer. Very good. Um, and uh, the, then, then uh, the assignment says that that we have perhaps a uh, an image. Where is the assignment? All right. So let's look at this this image here. So let's uh, embed an image, uh, perhaps from Gizmodo. Let's see. Uh, if we look at this and open this, um, open image, open copy image address. Let's see if that works. Uh, if we paste it there, uh, indeed there is an image there, right? So we could use that URL uh, as a as a hyperlink uh, for that image, and this is what I would prefer that you do: that you have links to images from outside, uh, so you don't get into any copyright issues uh, of owning this image or not. Uh, if you're linking to it outside, it's already public, right? You're just uh, embedding it in your file. And they're free to remove it anytime they want, and I won't have it anymore, right? Uh, but if I actually download it uh, to my server, right, and I make a copy, a digital copy, and then link to it locally, then I might run into uh, copyright issues, right? So let's let's keep it uh, links to remote uh, files outside, so we don't have any of these issues. Make sense? All right. So let's grab that uh, and let's create an image widget here. So to create an image widget, uh, we have a source, and we can um, uh, inject that image in there. Let's see how that renders. There's our image. Okay. Um, now our current image is not responsive. Right. It's um, uh, notice that our header is responsive to some to some degree. Right. It is getting it, it is wrapping, uh, but our image is not. Right. So one way that we could um, that we can uh, uh, fix that uh, is that uh, it depends what you want to do, right? But one way is that uh, uh, let's inspect it and see what what we could do. Uh, so let's bring that here. Let's just bring that this down here. Uh, what we could do is extend the extend its width, right? And say that uh, the width, right, is a hundred percent, right? If it's a hundred percent, it's going to extend the entire width of the page, right? And the height uh, is uh, it grows proportionally, right, to maintain the aspect ratio, right. So whatever you do to the uh, to the width, let's say 100 pixels, right. Notice that uh, it, uh, it the, the the height um, is also um, uh, proportionally grows and shrinks with the to maintain the, the aspect ratio. So if you increase the, the the width, notice that the height also increases proportionally. Yes. So if you say uh, unless you Unless you override it, you say yes. I want the width to be a uh, hundred or maybe two hundred, 
right? But I don't want it. I don't want the 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 height to grow proportionally. I can separately manipulate the height all by itself and say that I want it to be. I want it to be a, a different pixel, right? And that's going to skew, right, and deform the picture from its original size. It's whatever you prefer to do. Uh, I would suggest you maintain the aspect ratio, right, and expand it to 100% and decide what to do, whether you want to, if this is too big, well, what do I want to maybe show on the left-hand side as an article, and then just and this, like, expand the one on the right-hand side. It's up, and I think that's what uh, uh, Gizmodo does. Gizmodo um, adds this left-hand side, right, on, on, on a desktop, right, and, and so this, this is not so big, right, and as this becomes smaller, it, it, um, it, it hides the left-hand side, right, so that the image, again, goes back to a, a manageable size, right. Again, up to you. 100% is fine. 100% is fine. Um, all right, so we have that. Obviously, on, on a smaller screen, notice that the image is responsive and it grows to, uh, to, to fill the, uh, the, the width of the, of the device. Everybody good? All right, so let's keep going. Let's um, um, then uh, in the assignment, we then ask you to have some content uh, that uh, that follows the, the image. So let's grab uh, some content from from uh, Gizmodo. Uh, maybe this HTML here. Uh, now, if I if I grab the HTML, if I grab the HTML and copy and paste it here. Right, if I grab it and paste it, uh, notice that what it pasted is just the raw, the raw text, right? And that's not exactly what we intended to do. Um, oops, did we break something? I think we broke something. Did I not close something? Image widget. Oh, I never gave it the width. I never gave it the width, right? Um, so, so what we could do is, is to decide that all images inside of a widget, right, are going to have a width of 100, right? So we could, we could decide that in our style sheet. We can go in the style sheet and say, right, if an image, um, if an image, right, is inside of a WD, um, web dev, uh, widget, widget, Right, and maybe we can be very specific and say that um, our images, images that are our immediate children of the class, right, saying like this, right, if they're immediate children, to be very specific, right, only images inside of a widget, uh, we can, we're going to make its width uh, to be width, width, to be 100%. Right, so let's go back. There it is, right, that's what we meant to do. I notice that notice that the HTML is not really HTML, right? Uh, so what we could do is come back here and uh, and actually look at the HTML that was used to generate this, right? If we inspect it, if we inspect it, uh, we'll see that it's this paragraph right here that contains hyperlinks and it contains other things in there, right? We could grab this and say copy this, copy this as the uh, copy the element, copy the entire element, and then paste it in here uh, in the widget list. Right? Copy. Right, so we can we can replace this and paste that. Now notice that this is the actual HTML with hyperlinks and um, uh, and uh, um, ends, right? Breakpoints and everything, right? So 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 this is more effective, right? Let's go back and refresh. And now we actually have, um, um, we actually have hyperlinks, right? We have everything in there. Uh, we could have grabbed more, I guess. Where is it? We can inspect and grab maybe two paragraphs. So let's see. Um, what's what's this here? We have a paragraph. We have this div. This div, div, and then this paragraph. You can just copy the whole thing. Copy. Oh, you can only copy. No, let me copy that. Let me paste it in here. 
There it is. So let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, two paragraphs with hyperlinks and everything. Everybody good? All right. All right, so let's keep going. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. Um, then in the, in the uh, assignment, it asks us to uh, add some more content, uh, the, the YouTube uh, iframe. All right, so let's do that. Let's go, uh, let's go grab something from YouTube. All right, let's uh, grab my uh, next boat. And um, so let's, uh, I'm going to share it. So there's a, there's a couple of ways to, there's a couple of ways of sharing uh, your, your YouTube videos. Uh, one of them is to copy the hyperlink and just send it over to someone, right? So somebody can come back to this, to this YouTube video or to embed it, right? Embedding it grabs the iframe uh, and you can copy and paste it into your code, right? So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do that into our YouTube video here. Let's paste it in there. Uh, and let's go back and see how that renders. Let's render, and now we have our video, My Nice Boat. Um, uh, here too, notice that the size is fixed, right? See that? It's fixed. Uh, it's not responsive. And to make this responsive, we could do the uh, width to be 100%, right? And, and just leave the height. Now you would expect that this would behave just like the image, right? Unfortunately, it does not behave just like the image. Um, if, you, if you do that, uh, the, the width is responsive, right? It changes the width, right? So it, it, it does adapt to the, to the overall width, but the height does not, right? The height doesn't, all right? Uh, there's, a, there's a nice article that shows how to make this responsive. I'll share it with you. It's not trivial. <laughs> Right, um, and I'll I'll, po I'll, I'll post a link um, on on Piazza how to make this so that it grows also vertically, right? Um, all right, so I think I think we're we're, we're we have we have uh, enough enough uh, content here that we can uh, play around with this, right? Uh, one of the things that we might want to be able to do, right, is to add the um, add the uh, the the uh, the toolbar, right, on the top right corner. All right, so let's let's work on that. All right, so let's 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 add this toolbar. And uh, so for each one of these, you have a widget, and each widget is going to have an instance of the toolbar, right? Uh, so for instance, and, and we could uh, implement it again with its own div, and again give it a class uh, so that we can control how it's going to show or display. Uh, inside of a widget, right? So this might be a toolbar. So um, we'll call it widget widget toolbar, right? And it's a good idea that you get into the um, you know into the habit of providing you know, good descriptive names, right, to components, right, so that you can quickly go back and and, and, and refer to them right, from 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 uh, from CSS, and you know what what exactly you're talking about, right? So anyway, so let's see. What do we want in, the, in that toolbar? We want two, basically two uh, glyphicons, right? One is a cog glyphicon. So let's let's add a cog glyphicon here. So span class glyphicon glyphicon cog. Nope, not that. Cog. Uh, so let's see what that renders. All right, so that renders a cog there. Uh, we also want the um, this this kind of like bar here. I don't remember what that is. Uh, let's go to Bootstrap and see what that might be. Um, let's see, maybe this one, Justify. Is there another one that looks more like a sandwich? No. All right, so I'll go with that one. I grab that, copy, and add another span uh, underneath with a class. For that, very good. Let's see how that renders. There it is. That's not exactly where we want it. Um, actually, uh, it's nowhere near where we want it. Um, so, so notice that uh, it's rendering where. Notice that this is H3. We have the div here. We have the div, and down below we have an H3. Uh, what's going on here? It's um, it wants to. Uh, it's it's rendering below it. Right? 
Uh, so let's see what we could do here to make this render here at the top right. Okay. So let's uh, let's uh, hover here and let's inspect it and see what we can do. So here's the toolbar. Here's our H3. Oh, where where do we put it? Oh, I thought we were doing this one up here. Did I put it in the wrong place? I did. This toolbar is for is one here. I was saying, why is it rendering like that? Okay, there it is. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, one thing that we could do, right? Um, one way we could do it is doing using float. Like we can say maybe float right, right? It sends it to a right, but it kind of starts messing up everything else, right? So let's not do that. Right? Uh, another way that that uh, we we could do it is to uh, um, uh, override the position, right? Say what is that I want you to do? Uh, so basically, what we want to do is is uh, remove it from the normal rendering. Wait a minute, what are we changing here? The widget, not the widget. The, not the widget. Is the toolbar? Thank you. Uh, the toolbar is the one we want to change the position, right? We want to say, um, I want to override your normal position mechanism. Normally, divs are rendered uh, as block elements, and they then they push everything else down. And what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, we're going we're going to make this absolute. Uh, notice what's happening here. It's no longer being um, is that no longer part of the uh, of the um, uh, uh, normal rendering uh, algorithm. Notice that typically, if you hover over it, it, it's a block element, right? It takes up the entire width. When you when you apply the position absolute, if you hover over it, notice that the width actually becomes the width of whatever's inside, right? Okay, uh, but uh, making it absolute allows me to position anywhere I want. Right? For instance, I can say that I want it uh, to be stuck to the to the right hand side. You know, zero pixels from the right hand side. Okay, uh, or maybe a little more, right? To compensate for the gutter, right? That the gutter that um, um, that Bootstrap adds. All right. So I, I, th I thought it was 15 pixels. Yeah, Bootstrap uses 15 pixel gutters. There it is, so it's 15 pixels. So that allows me to add that. Let's try and use this technique uh, across all, uh, all of these toolbars. Right? So, so what we could do is grab this toolbar and just apply it to all of these. Right? Apply it to all of these, to the images, um, to the, to the uh, text, uh, to the iframe, and that's it. Right. So right now it do, it just doesn't do anything, right? It just it just it just they just behave like normal normal divs. Uh, but we saw that if we add the um, if we add uh, positioning uh, and we, we can we can change that behavior. So so let's dec let's declare this in the in the style sheets, and we'll say that um, again toolbars inside of a widget. So a widget that contains a toolbar. Right, it contains a toolbar, so it would be wd, wd, and then toolbar. What we want to do is, no, that's not what we want to do, is position, and then what was it? Absolute, right? Absolute, absolute. And then we change the, the right-hand side. We say that is going to be zero pixels. So it's, no, not zero pixels, 15 pixels, right? Uh, so if we do that, uh, looks like it's working. Right, we have it. We have it for the. Uh, is that working? Is it there? It is there, right? Yeah, it is there. Uh, but notice that the contrast doesn't look right. right? So what we could do is uh, is change maybe its background. Uh, we can we can inspect it and um, and change the background of the of the toolbar. We can set it maybe uh, here, right? We can say that. Uh, the background is white, right? It's white. Um, what else can we do? Uh, we could make it uh, its opacity, so it gets a little bit see-through, so you could see a little bit through the the the, the content. Um, so one is in completely opaque, right? But if you will go something below that, maybe zero nine, it's a little it's a little transparent, right? So that you can see through, maybe uh, so you can see the content uh, seep through. Right, so let's go uh, maybe uh, seven. Right, so notice that you can see a little bit through this, uh, see a little bit through the contents, right? And you can decide how much. Um, what else can we do? 
uh, uh, we could maybe change a little bit the padding so that the padding so it adds a little more space uh, 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 left, right, above, everywhere. Uh, so padding maybe give us a five pixel padding. Um, uh, maybe uh, also uh, we can make it a rounded corner right on the bottom left. Uh, so we can uh, change the border, uh, the border, and we can change the border, the radius, right? Um, and maybe the radius, maybe do a, like a two pixel. Let's try two pixels. So you notice that it is adding uh, radius, right? That's, maybe that's a little bit too much. Uh, maybe let's go with, um, with 10, right? But notice that I don't want the radius all around. I only want the radius on the bottom left, right? So you could say a border, um, I think bottom left, there it is, bottom left radius. Now you can, you, can, you can individually change each one individually, so we'll go with that. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty good. Uh, that's that's pretty much what we what we want for the assignment. Maybe it's a little bit too much transparency, right? So maybe uh, change the opacity uh, a little less, maybe eight. Okay, uh, maybe even less. I don't know. Nine. Okay. Uh, and so so yeah so so this this tool allows me to really play around with this and see what we can do. Let's see how it looks everywhere else. Okay, it looks looks nice. Uh, let's copy this, copy and go back to our styles, our styles for the widget, and paste it under here. Yes, All right? Uh, and uh, that, if we refresh, notice that we have our toolbar. Everybody good? All right. Um, play around this with your own content. Right? You'll need to fix the uh, the YouTube video so that it's it's responsive, not only. Uh, horizontally but also uh, vertically also notice that this is uh, th there should be some space in between here uh, that looks way too too, cr too uh, crunched up right uh, perhaps some margin uh, every widget should have some margins right um, right so so for instance each widget um, uh, all widgets dot WD uh, widgets um, you can add some margins uh, at the bottom, uh, maybe you know, uh, maybe ten pixels uh, to to add some some spacing be in between. See that? Right, so that looks much better. Everybody okay? All right. Um, all right. So uh, let's let's look at um, at being able to edit these things, right? To eventually. Uh, we're going to be able to grab this, right, and just move it around the page, right, and reposition it somewhere on the page, right. Uh, we'll do that a little later. Uh, for now, let's uh, let's say that we want to be able to uh, edit that particular uh, widget if you click on this, yes. And the the assignment asks us that uh, there will be different um, editors for different types of widgets, right. If you click on the uh, YouTube uh, widget, uh, you should navigate to the YouTube editor right if you click on the on the on the image uh, editor widget right it should take you to that that uh, that particular type of widget right so let's let's do a couple of these I'm not gonna do all of them let's uh, let's go with um, is it high here Wow um, actually let me let me stop here and